All right, hey guys, Cole Nystrom here, over with uh, at the Echo Bar with Eric Rikers. Eric, thank you so much for having us, man. Man, my pleasure. Great to be back here. We've uh, loved the room so much, man. It's uh, such a pleasure to be back with you guys. Love having you guys over here. It's, it's great. Cool. So this week we are going to talk about replacing some samples that we ended up recording. So we're trying to use those to make it sound more organic, more natural. What's your thought? Yeah, more natural. Um, you know, you can use samples any way you want um, to augment and manipulate a sound to, to turn it into anything that you want. You know, the, the creativity goes, can go anywhere you want with it. Um, this particular technique is um, utilizing samples that you created or, you know, that we created on the day that we recorded our project. So you're using the same drum kit, the same drummer, the same microphones, the same preamps, EQs, whatever outboard gear you used while you were tracking, you use that same setup, exactly the same setup, to make your samples. And what you can do with that, of course, is layer those samples back in on top of your recording. And uh, when you do that a, a certain way, you can keep the, the, the naturalness uh, if that's a word, you can keep it natural, um, sounding more natural than more of a manipulated, um, you know, uh, effect type uh, drum scenario. Yeah, so. keeping the tone while you change some of the lens in it, right? Exactly, exactly. Um, cool, cool. Yeah, so. Awesome, man. Well, why don't we dive right on into it? Great, let's do it. All right, so let's take a listen to what we recorded last week. Alright, um, I thought that sounded pretty good, um, but what I noticed immediately after that first tom fill was that the ride cymbal got really loud. What's happening there is the ride is bleeding into the tom mic, so let's take a listen to that. Um, I'm going to play it for you, and then I'm going to mute the two tom mics, and you're going to hear that ride disappear. we got a lot of bleed coming through those mics, so let's check it out. Pretty obvious, um, pretty easy to hear that when I muted the tom mics, how drastically the uh, the ride cymbal ducked down in the mix. And um, I like the level that the toms came in at, but that ride is, is too loud. So one of the things that you can do is when you have, when you record your own drums and you record the samples like we did, what you've got are those, the, the exact same drum through all the exact same equipment that you use to record with. And now you can take those samples and blend them in with the live microphones. And um, you can do that using a bunch of different, uh, several different types of software programs. Um, in this case, I'm going to use Slate Trigger. There's a, I know there's a bunch of other programs out there as well. Uh, Massey DRT, and um, you, you can always put things in by hand too. It takes a little longer, but you can definitely get things synced up just the way you want. Um, and um, something that's important to keep in mind here is when you're blending these sounds in, um, you might think, well, why don't I just mute the, the live microphones and just use the samples? And that um, isn't necessarily what you always want if you want to keep things natural. One thing that, that keeps the drum sounding natural is having some of that bleed, but in this case, the bleed is too much of that ride mic. So we're not going to mute them completely. We're just going to pull them down, and then we're going to put our samples in on top of it. And you'll see it, it still has a really a nice natural sound to it. So... I've pulled the uh, the faders down for the live mics, and you'll see I've unmuted my my sample tracks. Now let's play it again and see what kind of blend we have. Pretty good. 
it's the exact same drum, uh, exact same gear you recorded it through, and but uh, it sounds really natural. And um, that's a technique you can do with all the drums, the snare drum, the kick drum, um, and you can get pretty detailed and intricate with it. Um, just depends on how far you want to go. So by using the samples that you created, that's the samples of the same drums, what you're, you're effectively doing to keep things sounding natural is you're changing, you can think of it like changing a ratio of the uh, direct sound of the drum that you captured versus the bleed that's coming through that microphone. I don't necessarily like to think of replacing drums when I'm doing this technique. I like to think of it more like I'm changing that ratio. So I'm getting a lot more of the uh, close mic of the drum and, and just pulling that bleed down. So I'm just changing the ratio quite a bit. So hope you enjoyed that. I hope that helps you um, in, your, in your mixing. That's one way to circumvent things that are um, bleeding through your other mics quite a bit. Um, if you don't, you might not always have that luxury of having the samples that you um, that that came with the, uh, the the track that you recorded. But if you're the one engineering it, I, I highly recommend that you take samples of your drums at the end of the recording session and and use those. Um, they'll help you a lot in your mix if you're really looking to keep your drums sounding natural. All right, see you next time.